Hey, welcome. My name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a training specialist at Pragmatic Works. And uh, for this week's blog, I wanted to talk a little bit about Power Apps. I like to do Power Apps and Power BI related things. Uh, but last week, or maybe two weeks ago, I put out a video with Power Apps talking about what happens if you if you want to control a little bit more of that delete function, right? So you have that delete button on a Power App and the record's deleted, and you might be nervous about putting that out there. Uh, and so in a video I did, I'll put the link below, uh, I showed that you could put a pop-up screen that actually shows up when you hit the delete button, and then it really asks the, the end user, are you sure you want to delete this, or did you accidentally click this by mistake? Uh, so it's kind of like a two-step verification process there, so to speak. However, after doing that video, I had some other people uh, write me and say, Matt, is there another way to do that where we delete the record, but we actually just store a backup of it? Is there a way that you can do that using some Power Apps commands? Uh, and there definitely is. So I thought it's not a really hard process to do. So I just wanted to show you how we could do that uh, in this week's blog. So let's take a look at the app that I'm currently uh, working on for this demonstration here. So as you see here, what I've got is just a, a basic screen where I've set up a gallery, I have a delete button, uh, and if we take a look at this delete button, it's a pretty, pretty simple uh, formula here. It says we're going to remove from a certain data source, which I called this the before patch, uh, and then it's going to say we're going to remove this entire item. Well, that's your normal delete, and if I were to click delete right now, that would completely go away. Well, where does this data actually exist? So let's take a look at my SharePoint list, because sometimes I think it's easier to follow along when we know what the columns and the fields and all of that are. So as we take a look here, this is my before patch SharePoint list. So I've got a title with the name of the person, favorite color, date, if they're a cat or dog person, and their favorite number. So I have one, two, three, four, five separate fields here. And then in my after patch, it's the exact same thing, except it's two different SharePoint lists. And so what I want to happen is if I decide to maybe delete Doris's record, I want Doris's record to go from the before patch SharePoint list over to the after patch. Uh, you know, because this way it's going to make sure that I technically deleted it, it's not data that we're really concerned about, but if we accidentally needed to get that back over, it'd be a very simple process. So we're just doing a, like what I like to call soft delete here. So let's see how we can actually get that done. So we're going to come back over to the app itself. And we're going to use what is called the patch command. And what the patch command does is patch command can either create a brand new record or it can update just a specific column of an existing record. For this scenario, what I want to do is I want to make a brand new record. I want uh, a new record to be on that after patch SharePoint list so that way the original delete did happen, but we still have a backup of it. So let's see how the patch command works. Uh, and then in future videos, I'll show you the alternate way of using a patch command. But for right now, we're just going to go with the default patch command of let's make a brand new record. So as we take a look here, I'm going to come up and we are going to get rid of this remove before patch. And you know what? Actually, let's keep that. That's what I want to happen. But before we get to the remove statement, I want this record to actually be placed over into a new list. So I currently have, just to, just to reiterate here, I currently have the delete icon that I've put in here. This is a gallery of, of records here. These are all before patch. And if you notice, I don't have every single column shown. I've got their name, the color, cat or dog, but notice I don't have their favorite number. Even though uh, in the date and favorite number are part of the list, I don't have it showing in the gallery, which is going to be okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over to our delete icon, and I'm going to say, yes, I definitely want to remove this record. But before we remove this record, I want to do some extra work. So I'm going to put a semicolon in front of it so that I can come up here, I'm going to create a lot of room, and I'll zoom in on this, so we can start writing this out. So the command is called patch. So as I start to type in patch here, we got patch. I'm just going to tab that over to promote the very first one. It says, give me the source. Where do you want to put this record? Or where are you trying to update the record? And I'm putting it on a brand new SharePoint list that I have. It's called my after patch. So we're going to go, I'm going to put it into the after patch. And then we're going to hit comma. And now it's going to say record. Well, what record are you trying to update? Well, this time we're not really updating, we're making a brand new one. And so whenever you're making a brand new one, you don't have to reference your current record. You go with the command of defaults. So defaults will actually make a brand new row of data for you. And then it's going to ask you, okay, defaults, where is this default, this new record, where is it going to be created? 
well, we want this to be created in our after patch. So let's put it in the after patch here. So we're gonna say after the patch, that's where I want this new record to be stored. And then we're gonna go with comma. And now it's gonna say, what's the update? What is it that you're trying to, to do here? So what I want is, this is where we start putting in all of our columns and the data that we want in those columns, or if you want to refer to the measure fields. So we're going to put those in. And the way you do this here is you have to start off with the fancy brace um, or the, the, the fancy bracket, however you want to refer to it. So as I come over here, we're going to go fancy brace. And now what we're going to do is give it the column that I want to update. So I'm going to say the title column. So there it is, and look, it's right there. So another way of doing these, you can always come down uh, and click on what you want rather than doing your tab or typing it all in. And so we're gonna go title, then colon, and now this is where you put what do you want to be in that title. Well, I want the title from the record that I put the delete icon on. So to get the record that we're currently talking about, we use the function this item. So this item, and we don't want dot cat or dog, it's gonna say, oh, you're talking about this row that you're currently on, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take this row, you want me to look at this row of data, and you want me to bring back something from it. Well, what do you want me to bring back from it? Well, I want you to bring back what's in the title column, because that is what's gonna go over into the new title column in our second list. So as we do that, so we'll tab that over, and once I have that one done, we close it off with a fancy brace. And now I'm just gonna do this for all of the columns that I want to actually create here. Now, key thing being, before you use this patch command, you, uh, you have to have these columns already created in your data source. If not, Power Apps has no clue what you're trying to do. So this column was already created in my after patch SharePoint list. So just something to keep an eye on there. So we're gonna go comma. Now what's the next thing I wanna do? Let's put in their favorite color. So we're gonna go to their favorite color. There it is. And what do we want? Well, we want to get it from the current record we're on. So we're going to go again, this item dot, and then we want their favorite color. So we're going to type that in, Oop, favorite color. We'll tab that over, close it off with a fancy brace. Okay, what's the next thing that we, we have here? And I'll zoom out. So we've got their title, favorite color. The next one we probably want is cat or dog. So let's bring it back on down. We'll go with our fancy uh, brace again here. And the column is called cat or dog. So there it is, cat or dog. And then again, I want it from this item, dot cat or dog, saying, hey, take the, take the cat or dog record from this row and we're gonna put it into the new one. Closed off with a fancy brace. Now notice that I only have those three pieces of information for this record, but I really want all of the information written back. So everything attached to this record. So if we go back to my before patch, notice that we also had a date field as well as a favorite number field. So those are the other two things that I want to be added into this after patch. So let's come on over and we're gonna add those in. So we want the date as well as the favorite number. So we come down, date as well as favorite number. So let's come in here, we'll zoom on in. Fancy brace to start off with again. And here we're gonna go with the date column. There it is. And notice that there's always a colon after the column name. And then what's the date? Well, we want the date from the current row that we're on. So it's gonna be this item dot date. Put that in, perfect. And we only have one last one here, their favorite number. So fancy brace, favorite number right here. And again, it's gonna be this item dot favorite number. Okay. And now we have everything that we need. We've now putting down after this comma all the things that we want. Look, we're still in the update part here. So now to close that we're done with the update direction, so to speak, we need to close that off with a parentheses. So I'll close it off with the parentheses. Everything looks good because it says, hey, you are currently where you're at. You are returning a record. That's what you are making and that's what we want. We want to make an actual record as we're doing this here. So let me zoom on out. And then afterwards, oop, and I think it just got rid of all that code. There it goes. All right, so then we have all that, we have that whole patch command happening. After the patch command, and let me clean this up a little bit here so it's easier to see. This is normally where you put your semicolon in, but I just put mine in earlier. And we'll get rid of all of that. All right, so it's gonna do that whole patch command. Then it's gonna remove that entire item from that record. 
So let's see if this actually works here and we didn't make any coding errors. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna take, uh, let's take Brooklyn down here. Favorite color is teal, cat or dog. We see that she is in the before patch, Brooklyn right here. Uh, favorite numbers 26, etc. She's not in my after patch currently at this point, but let's see if we can get that changed. So let's hit the play button. I'm gonna select Brooklyn. And it's working, I got the, so it, the record is definitely gone. All right, uh, so let's come over here to my after patch. Let's do a refresh here and notice Brooklyn is here. If I go back to the before patch, Brooklyn is no longer in the before patch. I also added just an extra validation thing. If you don't wanna to go to the SharePoint list itself uh, and you wanted your end users to actually see this, I made a brand new screen and I have a button here that takes me to that screen. So see after delete records. And right here, I see Brooklyn. I see Brooklyn, teal, date, favorite number. Even though that wasn't in the original gallery because I coded it on the patch command, it shows up in the second one here. So that was just a, an a extra little thing that I did when I was validating so I didn't have to go back into the SharePoint. And that one, if you're interested, is just a simple data table. So I went to insert and I did a data table. And the only difference was is the data source, instead of the before patch, it's the after patch. So we're only seeing the after patch records. So I hope this patch command really helped you out. Soft deletes, this is a real quick way to fix that problem. Uh, the one issue is you do have to recreate your SharePoint list with the columns, et cetera. But once you have that hard work done, the patch command is really useful. Uh, I hope to put out some more videos showing you how you can use the patch command just to update only one of those columns. Maybe not make a brand new uh, column, but maybe we can add a column in there that said it was temporarily deleted or something along those lines. Uh, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you enjoyed, anything that you want me to do in the future. Uh, and I hope this was helpful.